you guys are thank you for coming once again to our Yahweh GPS segment the English version we appreciate you all we appreciate your support your ne your never ending love and all of your prayers we thank you guys so very much um, but before we begin we want to say hello to all of our supporters that is constantly watching and the Yahweh GPS team Mummy Nellan, Dr. Elizabeth, Pastor Lewana, Sister Natasha, I'm Alicia, Abigail, and hey daddy, how are ya? Hope you're doing well. Um, before we begin, you know, we have to pray and invite the Holy Spirit. So everybody close your eyes and bow your heads. Sister Ashley will pray for us to begin. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, we give you thanks for our praise for what you are. This is from us today. We grant peace and bless the Holy Spirit to your chosen people, the Jews throughout the world, wherever they are at you, Lord. And as we come before you, do Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you cover the Holy Spirit and guide us through this Yahweh GPS segment. We ask that you please the spirit of understanding and the spirit of knowledge and wisdom upon every single person that is watching, only them but us who is who are here doing this GPS today, dear God. We ask that, that the words that come out of our mouth, the explanation, Holy Spirit, of the text, of the message, of the word, Holy Spirit, be able to not only go through one you not the next place, we them to be able to meditate on it and understand everything that we're saying, so that they themselves, Holy Spirit, can go out and be disciples and teach others, Holy Spirit, once again. We thank you, Lord, and we ask, but we know we made mistakes in this prayer. We ask that you correct our mistakes, Holy Spirit, many vital information we forgot to add in this prayer. We ask that you add it on for us. We do not pray you in vain. We do pray to you, Yahweh, and you call all the Shem, Adonai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Nasa, Emunah, Yahweh. So, um, you guys all know that we have been on this long journey of faith. We've been pushing and pushing faith and what is faith, what does faith mean, what's the substance behind faith, how to build faith, the different levels of faith. We've just been talking about faith, 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 faith. Um, but today, same thing, we're still going on with faith. Today our topic is called the building of faith. And we have our, you know, little sub point, knowledge of God and our passage of study will be in Hebrews chapter 11. Um, the goal of this for all of you at the end of this specific segment is at the end of the session, the student will be able to identify knowledge as a constituent element of faith. So we have Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Faith is a firm assurance or a belief of things, which is the knowledge of God that we hope for, for the hope of God um, in action, a demonstration, which is an act of obedience of those you do not see, which is based on overconfidence. So the act or thought which makes it possible to perceive something or someone or to represent it and to understand its characteristics, its properties, well as a result of this act. So our first, now another sub point is knowledge. We have the knowledge which reveals God's nature, God's attributes, and his identities. So there's four natures, there's six attributes, and there's six or seven attributes, and then there's um, his About 11 12. identities. 12? Yeah, it's 12. 12. All right, so knowing who God is will tell us what he is capable of and whether or not we should put our faith in him. Let us analyze the nature of his person. 
So when we're talking about the nature of someone, we're talking about who they are. Like, what is it that makes them so great? What is it that makes them this person? So our first thing that we want to say about God and his nature is that he is a divine person. And we find this in Hosea chapter 11, verse 9. It says, I will not do according to my fierce anger. I will renounce destroying Ephraim, for I am God and not a man. I am the saint among you. I will not come angrily, which means when God says he's divine, when he says that he is a divine person, he means that or we're saying that he is above getting angry. He is above us. He's above what humans do. So when God wants to, like, when we talk about God's anger and we talk about God's wrath, God, he's, he tries not to get angry with us, in other words. That's why we say he's a divine person, because he doesn't get angry. He does get angry. He doesn't... I know what I'm trying to say. Um, number two, he is a spiritual person. God is a spiritual person. He's of a spiritual nature. God is far from being a human person. And we know this because there's evidence in John chapter 4, verse 24. It says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have number three, which is he is an unchanging person, which we find in James chapter 1, verse 17. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6a and Hebrews chapter 11 chapter 1 sorry verse 12 so in James chapter 1 verse 17 it says all excellent grace and every perfect gift comes down from above from the father of light with whom there is neither change nor a shadow of variation so if you guys remember from one of our previous lessons we had God does not lie God does not change and he does not fail which is he does not feel in his promises. He doesn't lie. So if he promises something, it's going to happen. And he does not change because he's the same God today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So in Malachi 3, verse 6, a, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 12, it says, You shall roll them up like a cloth, and they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. And our fourth point underneath that is an eternal person. So God is everlasting. Um, God is an eternal person. The word means that which has no beginning, no end, and no interruption. Psalms chapter, sorry, Psalm has no chapters, you guys. Psalm doesn't have chapters. Psalms 90, verse 1 and 2. Lord, you have been a refuge for us from generation to generation. Before the mountains were born and you created the earth and the world. You are God from everlasting to everlasting. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, Verse 40, it says, I lift up my hands to heaven and say, I will live forever. So we use the word eternal to describe God because, as it says, he has no beginning, he has no end. And he is a spiritual person. Um, you can, people would, I would say, use the word immortal, but immortal is more in the sense for humans because God is a spirit. So now we're going to get into God's attributes. Um, this is also kind of describing who he is and in the sense of how he acts, I want to kind of say. So his attributes, the attributes of God. So our first attribute for God is that he is holy. So when you hear us pray, you usually hear us say, Le Dieu d'Abraham, le Dieu d'Isaac, et le Dieu de Jacob, le Saint d'Israël. Which is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Holy One of Israel. So the holy part is what we're saying. He is the Holy One of Israel, which means he is the holiest of holies. And as we know that Israel is the chosen nation. Yeah. So... He is holy. His holiness tells us that we cannot approach him the way that we want to. Therefore, we must comply, which means when we go to God, like previous in the natures when we were talking about, um, he is, oh, uh, what was that? Keep going. He is a spiritual person. When we go to him, God is spirit, which means we have to go to him in spirit and in truth. It is just like this. We must comply to who he is. We must conform ourselves to who he is. So when we worship him or when we pray to him, we must pray to him in spirit. So, and our spirits is what we have to kind to kind of get to a sense where it's kind of holy. So in First Peter chapter one verse fifteen it says, "But since he who called you is holy, you." You also are holy, and all your conduct, as it is written, verse 16, 
ye shall be holy, for I am holy. And our second attribute of God is that he is love. Um, the Bible declares that love is from God and God is love. First John chapter 4 verse 8 says, He who does not love has not known God, for God is love. Oh God, your love is wonderful. And Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 says, Yahweh is seen to me from afar. I love you with an eternal love. This is why I keep my goodness to you. And our third one we have underneath his attributes is he is righteousness. So the Bible declares that God is righteous and always acts righteously and that there is no unrighteousness in him. And to be fair, to do what is right, to act with fairness, integrity, and impartiality, which means he doesn't choose a side. He's not biased. We honor the righteousness of God like Job. In Job chapter 36 verse 3, it says, I will prove the righteousness of my maker. And Psalm 5 verse 9, lead me in your righteousness, save me in your righteousness. Psalm 71 verse 2, and your righteousness reaches to heaven. And verse 19 of Psalm 71, the justice of God is unlimited. It can lead us and save us. Um, our fourth point under his attributes is he is generous. Romans chapter 8 verse 32 tells us, Who did not spare his own son, but, he, but gave him up for all of us? How will he not also give us all things with him? And our fifth point under this, under his attributes, is that he is omniscient. So we know that there's like about three of those omni words. We know there's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, omnipotent. So when we're, right now we're talking about his omniscient, which means the shinit part is he's all knowing. So we could say consciousness, stuff like that. He has the capacity for everything known. He is not limited in terms of knowledge. The Lord is a God who knows everything so whatever you do you can't run from God you can't hide from God God knows it all God sees it all there's nothing there's nothing that you have thought about that he has not known before you even thought about it that he, God knew your life before you even knew your life God knows you better than you know yourself it's, it's a lot. Psalm 139 verse 1 through 4 says you know when I sit down and when I stand up. You get my mind from afar. You know when I walk and when I lie down. And you go all my way. Because the word is not on my tongue that already eternal. You know it entirely. I know that you, Lord, are incomparable wisdom. You don't need any teacher. You have no advice to consult. Romans chapter 11 verse 33 through 36 says, O depth of the riches of the wisdom and of the knowledge of God, that his judgments are unsearchable and his ways incomprehensible. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who gave him the first so that he would have to receive in return? It's from him through him and for him that all things glory to him for all ages amen our sixth and our seven are two omni words so it's omnipresent god is everywhere at once he's here he's there he's everywhere so he has the capacity to be everywhere at the same time and he is not limited by space psalms 139 verse 7 through 10 it says where shall i go from your spirit and where shall i free flee from your presence if i ascend to heaven you are there if i lie down in hell there you are if i take the wings of the dawn and go and dwell at the end of the sea there also your hand will guide me and your right hand will take me so they're like that come that compares but it ties in with the whole omniscience so god is everywhere which means he knows everything that you're doing there's nothing that you can hide from god because he is always there um number seven he is omni omnipotent which means all power. He is the absolute power. He is power. Um, he is not limited in capacity and power, and he is not powerless in the face of any situation in our life. He's able to do whatever he wants. Psalm 115 verse 3, Our God is in heaven, and he does whatever he wants. 
Isaiah 49, chapter 49, verse 26, it says, I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will get drunk on their blood like new wine. And all flesh shall know that I am the Lord, your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And with that seventh point, we conclude today's segment. So I'm going to do a quick recap to make sure that you guys got everything. So we had our first big point, which is knowledge, and we broke it down into three sections. His natures, his attributes, and his identities, which we will see next week, Monday. Um, for the four natures, the four natures that we analyzed, we, na we analyzed that his first nature was that he's a divine person. We found that in Hosea chapter 11, verse 9. Our second um, nature was a spiritual person, and we find that in John chapter 4, verse 24. Our third is an unchanging person. We found that in James chapter 1, verse 17, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6a, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 12, and an eternal person. And we find that in Psalms 90, verse 1 to 2, and Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 40. And his attributes, there are seven of them. We have the first one, which is he is holy, which we find in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. He is holy. Number two, God is love. He is love, which we find in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. And Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Number three is he is righteous, which we'll find in Job chapter 36, verse 3, Psalm 5, verse 9, Psalm 71, verse 2, and 19. Number four, he is generous. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Number five, he is omniscient, which means all-knowing. Psalm 139, verse 1 to 4. And Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. We have number 6. He is omnip omnipresent. Sorry. Omnipresent. Um, where we find in Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10. And number 7, which is our last one, which is he is omnipotent, which is he has power. He is the absolute power, which we'll find in Psalm 115, verse 3. And Isaiah chapter 49, verse 20. Six. And with that being said, we are done, folks, for this part. You know, we have, there's more to this. So make sure you tune in, you know, tune in again, because we got, we got stuff for y'all. Yeah, we do. Got conversations for y'all. So we're going to end with prayer as always. Amen. That's so calling. Oh. That's calling. Give me a minute. Let's finish praying first. All right. Everybody close your eyes. Bye. <laughs> Right. Dear Heavenly Father, hmm? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. You are the first, you are the last, you are the beginning, you are the end. No one comes before you, no one comes after you, you are Alpha, you are Omega, you are the author and publisher of our book. And though we praise you, Heavenly Father. First, I want to grant peace and blessings unto Israel, God. We know that those are your chosen people. So, Heavenly Father, we grant that peace and we grant that blessing and we grant that saving unto Israel. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now to thank you for allowing us to be in your presence once again, to reunite in your name, Heavenly Father, to learn something new in your word, to learn something new in your power, God. I ask that you continue to grant us peace. I ask that you continue to grant us blessings, Heavenly Father. And I ask that you please protect us as we are in your presence. Father God, I ask that you bless those who are watching right now. Bless those who will be watching later today, later this week. And bless those who will be watching maybe years from now, God. I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you please let them listen to this with a new mind, a new heart, and a renewing spirit, God. Let them see something new. Let them know something new. Let them, let them not leave here the same way they came watching this live, but let them leave with something new and more profound heavenly father i do not pray to you vain and i know that i do not i know that i do not know how to pray i know i made mistakes i know i made incorrections i know my english is not correct but god i ask that you please fix them and correct whatever mistakes is in this prayer and whatever i forgot to add i ask that you should uh, add whatever i put in this prayer that wasn't supposed to be put in here. I ask that you subtract it from the equation, God. We do not pray to you in vain, but we do pray to you. Amen. Alright, goodbye everyone. Si bon Dieu, merci, 
Dieu Tout-Puissant, pour le Saint-Esprit. Tiens nous libérer, en bas force fait noir. Mais l'Esprit bon Dieu, pour le Jésus. Hey! 